Uh, today I have Chantal Imbach of Photos in Order. She believes sharing photographs and the stories that go with them has the power to connect people. Chantal's own story begins in Switzerland. After relocating to a bushfire bushfire prone area of Melbourne, she witnessed the devastation of Black Saturday and was struck by the importance of protecting family photographs. Already running a professional organising business, Chantelle pursued further specialised training in photo organisation. She quickly realised she had found a niche that was a perfect fit for her. Armed with her extreme level of care and attention to detail, Chantel brings order to photographs, takes the time to understand her clients and empowers clients to maintain their own photo collections and to tell stories. Chantel works with her clients to return their photographs to their lives so they can share them and the stories with family now and into the future. Hi, Chantel. Hi, Kate. Thanks oh. for having me. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming on. I really need this, and I'm sure people do, other people do, because I actually spent three months searching through my mother's um, photographs and found that a lot of them didn't pertain to me. I had no idea because they were just sceneries or friends that I didn't know. And now I'm the grandmother and mother <laughs> who has done the same thing. I have boxes and bags and, you know, even 30,000 on my phone. So please help us. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say before I even start going into it all, what you describe is a very common situation. So you're not alone. Thank <laughs> you. I have insurance. <laughs> it doesn't solve the problem yet, but you're not alone. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, look, it is what we're dealing with every day, basically the photo overwhelm and having our cameras in our back pocket or in the handbag at all times. Um, talking about the phone, of course, doesn't help. <laughs> no, that's right. I know. And I like I was behind the phone, the camera all the time anyway, to start with. And I don't think my grandchildren knew what my face looked like for the first oh. three months. <laughs> Grandma's got a weird face. <laughs> yes, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Look. Oh, where do we even start? <laughs> um, look, I think you you touched on it already. Like, uh, you've gone through your mom's photos, which is can be really hard um, because, and especially if that person's not around any longer and we can we, we can't ask questions and find out stories a lot of these photos become meaningless to us because we don't know those stories behind them and you know in the end it's all about the storytelling photos are a means to tell a story to enhance a story to you know that's the visual part of it but really it is here to document the story and there's a lot of different ways to record stories but without it they often become meaningless and th that's heartbreaking in a way you know because then they get thrown out yes and that's what I hated doing Shanta because it's just you know it is a piece of history for one thing mm -hmm. and it was a piece of my mum's story so yeah. I really have no idea of that part of her story and we want yeah. to pass them down you know we want That's to pass right. our stories yeah. down yeah. so where do we start <laughs> <laughs> oh where do we start <laughs> um Look, generally speaking um I often say start with the digital part mm -hmm. uh because and this principle goes for the printed photos as well um and for anything that we want to organize, basically, it's an organizing principle. Everything needs a home, right? We all have heard that. <laughs> and it's no different with photos. They need to live somewhere. And ideally, they all live in the same place because that makes it so much easier to then 
you know, curate that collection to look after it, to keep it safe. I'm talking about backing up, which is very important, of course. And it, it, all of that is a lot easier um, if it's in one place. So we can achieve that in the digital world, but also for the printed photos. Now, backup is hard enough. Well, it's actually not that hard in the digital world. Once it's set up, you know, it can be easy. Mm. Um, but with printed photos, when you think about it, the only way to keep them safe and back them up is to digitize them. Because when the print is gone, it's gone normally. You know, if you're lucky, you might have a negative floating around somewhere that's still intact and that might be a backup. But generally, gone is gone and it's lost, yeah. which is heartbreaking. So I have a bag of... Um... <laughs> <laughs> again very typical <laughs> we all have them <laughs> all, all of my um all of my film is in bags like you know I've still got them yet they don't print photos out anymore either yeah but oh yeah yeah the the photo there are um camera shops that can still do that they're oh. still there it's like with if you've got old film reels for example the eight millimeters that a lot of people still have um, they can still be converted into the modern day uh, formats and digital uh, made, made digital and i actually highly recommend that because uh you know if you've got the right equipment <laughs> the protector and whatnot yeah. you can still watch them but they do deteriorate over the years and especially you know we live in a harsh climate here in australia a lot of us it gets hot it gets cold um if they've been buried somewhere in a box in the attic or in wherever they will have suffered badly if you're yeah. up north far north queensland you know chances that you have to deal with mold is pretty high and mm -hmm. that's not a good thing to happen to your photos or films so i highly recommend to have them converted there are specialists who can do that and you'd be surprised uh, it might not actually cost as much as you might expect mm -hmm. um and often what i recommend uh, a little a little trick here on the side is that or a tip not a trick mm -hmm. uh, especially when it's about those old family photos or movies you know, let the family members chip in. You don't have often to pay everything yourself. You could say, oh, you know what? We've got mom's photos here. I want to pick the best and have them digitized. Would you guys be prepared to chip in and pay a little, uh, you know, part of that yeah. and share the cost? Because eventually that's also the beauty of it and the joy when they digital that you, you can easily share them. Yeah, you I can all benefit from it. You know, you can create a photo book, and the beauty of that is because they are digital. The photo book is made from digital photos. You can create one book, and you can print it ten times, and the whole, you know, all your siblings or whoever yes. can have a book, <laughs> and you can share that joy. And as you said in the intro, it is about connection. I do feel, you know, it's. The photos and the stories that come with the photo connect, mm. you know, it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And how, like, how do we keep the stories going? Because there's so many of my photos I've yeah. written on the back, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, our children may not have been born either. So yeah. how do we share that part right. of it? So that's the whole part about the story writing, the curating the photos. How do you attach that? Now in the digital world, it is easy. You can do what you've done, what you just described, writing on the back of a photo as we used to. You can do that digitally. Uh, with, you don't even need fancy photo management software or anything. But, you know, anything really in the digital world there is the danger always that it gets lost over time because you know people might move those files and if it hadn't been done right you might lose that information uh, there is always that risk so what i would do with that is to actually write them down you don't have to write an autobiography yeah <laughs> you know but um it's take a photo and a piece of paper and just start writing a short story it can be two sentences it can be a page or two about that and what memories it brings back 
um, and start with that and collect them just loose sheets and maybe have a little ring binder and just add them to that and they're not you know that way they become a bit of a collection of stories and sometimes maybe you will see that a bit of a theme emerges somewhere and then you could collate those and maybe make a photo book and add a few more photos and you know type up those stories and add them to the photo book and pass that on yeah that's that's one way one way that I really like and I find that's beautiful and I also find that people really appreciate that it's you know if you for example gift that to one of your children or to your children um it's precious Mm, it's yeah. very precious you know um and don't we all wish that our grandparents had written down their stories that we could now read them and you know when we're 15 or 25 very few of us would appreciate that or show interest in that mm -hmm. it's something I feel comes with age yes that you look back and that you start to get more interested in your ancestors and how they lived and if you had access to those stories you know how precious would that be yeah. um yeah yes I love the history of family yeah. and yeah it's um yeah it's such a great idea to write just even two sentences down about yeah. the photograph as well so yeah. um so how do we decide you know like we've got the mm. camera in the pocket now so <laughs> how do we decide which is an important photo whereas before we had yeah. you know the film that we only had mm. the 24 and it cost so much <laughs> and we took the photo yes but now we take yeah. 15 photos of the one thing <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> do we save every one of them <laughs> what do we do oh please well you can <laughs> as I used to say it's um um there's no right or wrong really in photo management or for the photo organizing mm -hmm. and um it's it's always a huge decision what to keep and what not but the reality of things is what and I think you mentioned that before nobody will want those photos no you know, that's right it's um when we're no longer here who's gonna want a, a photo collection containing like 60,000 photos or more which is pretty much standard these days mm. our children will not want that let's just let's be honest and it's the same with you know the children don't want a house full of stuff Yes. And the photos are part of that stuff. The tragic thing is, with all that overwhelm, if that happens, that there is a chance that all the photos get thrown out. Yes, you know, that's also right. the important ones get thrown out, possibly by mistake. It can happen. So what I actually recommend is to, um, to really think about it and even... Um, go so far as to have a think about what is my photo legacy? What do I want to pass on? Which photos do I want to pass on? Um, you mentioned before your mom had traveled a lot. You, you know, you had no connection to those travel photos, which is fine. It wasn't her memory and for her it was important. Mm. But for you, they are not important and it's totally fine to let go of these. But there will be other photos, some of them that um, connect to you or that uh, maybe of events that you went through together. And so you both have a memory that is attached to that photo. And these are sort of the important ones. And obviously, you know, um, when you do go through a photo collection and you will have experienced that too, uh, especially photos like sceneries or work-related photos, they often become totally meaningless, mm. you know. But the photos with people, I always use the example of the Eiffel Tower because everybody knows the Eiffel yes. Tower. <laughs> and we have many photos of that. A, yeah. <laughs> You can grab a photo, yeah. most probably a much better photo than you took off the yeah. Eiffel Tower from the internet. Yeah. I shouldn't promote stealing photos on the internet. No. <laughs> Don't steal them. But, no. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. But, and because, you know, everybody can do that. But a photo with you standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, 
Yes. That's the one that has meaning. That tells the story. Oh, hey, you know what? I saved up two years to finance a trip to Europe and I finally got to see Paris and I did this and this and this. You know, that's the story that you want to pass on. Not the simple B effect. I was in Paris. Yes, yes. so what, you know, so have others too. But how did you get there? Why did you, you know, why did you even dream of going to Paris? Um, that's what you want to tickle out of people. And ideally, you can tickle that out of people when they hear, you know, use that time and talk to them and find out the stories. It's become so simple. You can simply use your phone and record somebody talking. Oh, yes. You can always transcribe it later. Mm. It's actually a very precious thing also to have a voice recording of a yeah. loved one, I find. Um, and with today's technology can very easily be incorporated into a slideshow, a little video. Um, uh, you could think, you know, if you maybe have elderly parents, you could show them a photo at a time don't overwhelm them yes <laughs> you know pick pick one or let them pick one that they find important turn the audio on and just let them talk about the photo and there you've got your story and again it doesn't have to be a whole book <laughs> you know? mm, no that's right yeah but snippets here and there um and these things, that, that's the precious part. Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah, and keeping their voice, yes. you know, and then how they said it as well, yes. you know, it's just yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, so it's a more sort of holistic um, approach, if you want. Yeah. It's not just about the photo. So, you know, in my work, it's very technical. It's, it's that whole technical step to sort it all, to declutter, to organize, to get rid of duplicates, um, to make sure that we can find the photos. That's very, very technical, but yeah. that's only one half of, you know, one part of the puzzle. There's so much more behind it. Yes. Um, yeah, and yeah, I've experienced it myself when I, I went through my mom's photo collection with her. Mm. which was in itself I can highly recommend if somebody you know if you've got the opportunity to do that um with the last one it's such an awesome experience yeah. you know it's you look back to onto memories but you also create a new experience going through those photos together hearing the stories laughing and crying um uh and it's much more fun to do it with somebody. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Rather than alone, you know, and yeah. it's a great experience. And I experienced the same thing, you know, the scenery photos, they off you go in the bin, you know, yeah. we don't want them. Ah, oh, here's one with that. Yeah, that's a keeper. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So how do you work with um clients and Chantel? What do you do? Um these days I've specialized in digital photo organizing mm -hmm. um, so I've got all sorts of clients I've got DIY clients mm -hmm. um, I call them they want to learn they really want to learn how to do it themselves yeah and I basically share all my tricks of the trade with them I show them the tools to use and it's always customized because there's so many different options out there um, there's no mm -hmm. one size fits all and at the other end of that service is the, I call it the VIP sort of client. You mm -hmm. just take it away, fix it, you know, yeah. do whatever you need to do, bring it back. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, I've walked out of clients' homes with entire computers under my arm. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, you know, they just, I don't want to know anything, just take it, fix it. Yeah. That, the magic wand yeah of course. <laughs> so the, that's the digital thing and with it's similar with the printed photos if people have printed photos uh, some feel confident they want to do it alone and they're happy to do it they just want a bit of guidance which is easy you know these days we assume session can be enough to get them started and to tell them a few tricks and what to do and what not to do what they need to get for the sorting 
uh, what they need to um, be careful about, uh, things like that, you know, um, tips like, for example, you know, don't just pull out photos out of a photo frame that has a glass because especially all the photos tend to get stuck to the glass and then you rip them. Oh, you wow. Them. So, yeah, and especially if they're old photos, really, you know, they're precious. You don't want to tear them. No. So things like that I share with clients yeah. or, again, if they want to, you know, in-home help and hands-on help assistance, um, we can do that. That's not a problem. And then, of course, the whole scanning. Um, yes. you know saving them into the digital age and archiving the prints because I do recommend to keep the prints it's best practice um, mm -hmm. even just in an archival box as a backup you don't necessarily need to um, have big albums that take up a lot of space um, yeah. yeah in my mom's case we for example um, condensed it down to almost exactly 4,000 uh, scans in the end. Wow. And that covered photos from not starting from 1900 to oh, wow. like the early 2000s when digital prints came in. Yeah. Uh, so we sorted and ended up with about 4,000 scans. Some of them were letters that we also digitized. Um, and all that now fits in four boxes that have the size of about one has the size of about a, a shoebox. Wow. So yeah. you can imagine that's a lot easier than to yeah. say, you know, a <laughs> shelf full of photo albums. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And see, I have boxes. I've got the archive boxes and there's 12 yeah. boxes down there, but I haven't sorted through them or, yeah. you know, given them like there's things on the back, but things yeah. will be meaningless as well. So, yeah. yeah. So I might need to go through with my family actually yes. to see what they would like, what would be yes. useful for them. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yes, that's always a good start. I find you know work together, talk together, and uh, you might be surprised. You know, one of them might be really into it. Um, I mean, gene genealogy that's a whole different beast. You know that, and it's not oh, my yeah. speciality. I've sort of done my and worked on my family tree and history and things but you know photos come of course into play with that and sometimes you'd be surprised that people you would not have expected that they are actually very interested and sometimes um they're not interested which also mm -hmm. is you know it's very common um and as I mentioned before I from experience what I observe is that as people get old, they get more interested yes. and they value it in a different way than, you know, a young one does. Some, yes, you know, there's exceptions. Some some love it, you know, they yes. genealogies <laughs> when they're 18, but that's the exception normally. So Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we're all so old, you know, to a 15-year-old, yeah. we're ancient. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, we're dinosaurs, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> yeah, a 40-year-old is like, oh, my goodness, you are so old. So that, that, That's another thing. You mentioned you've got grandchildren, is that yes. right? Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I've noticed that little kids, they love, they love seeing photos of you as a child because they just can't get their head around the fact that <laughs> we were so young once. They just can't. Yeah, it's I know. so funny. And they love seeing those sort of photos, you know. And, again, that's another way. Imagine you had a little photo book maybe with, you know, uh, a few photos from yourself when you grew up and maybe a few stories and show it to your grandkids and tell them the stories and you know that's even like intergenerational you pass it on and it's they don't see the importance now of course but they mm. will because when you think about it it's you know without you they wouldn't be you're part of their story too Yes, that's right. So, and I think that's something people realise the older they get. Mm. And that's why they value those photos maybe a bit more sometimes. Yeah. That they would think, you know, it's it's part of who we are, even if we never met those people. That's what I find so special. Yeah. It, it gives us roots. It gives us like a place 
like the the feeling we belong we belong to a yes. family you know we came from somewhere they they had all their stories um and that sort of makes it um part of my story as well yeah, so definitely i have a photo from around 1890 of wow. my grandmother and her like her mother yeah. And it's just, and her brother was in it as well. Yeah. And I can remember her saying, you know, um, mum was so angry with me because I wrecked my, I dirtied my beautiful dress. But she, <laughs> my, my great, great grandmother looks a lot like my mum, who looks a lot like, you know, my granddaughter. Yeah. So it's really, the connection is, yeah. it's, sometimes really surreal you know to see yeah. that person's face yeah. and you go oh oh that's that person <laughs> not, you know not my mother or granddaughter so yeah it's fascinating yeah. isn't it yeah. yeah it is and they and said it again it's the connection it's it's what it is yeah yeah that's yeah. right yes yeah so um I know you have a podcast too Chantelle yeah with uh, together with um Fiona She's mm -hmm. also a photo organiser here, here in Melbourne. She actually specialises in scanning um, and I do the digital part. So we work together a lot and we have started that podcast about two years ago. Uh, it's called DIY Photo Organising because yep. it's, um, it's made for DIY photo organisers, yeah. <laughs> you know, for for people who want to look after their photos better and learn about how to do that and so on a fortnightly basis we share tips um you know we've got our five golden rules of photo organizing but then we share more more tips about specific topics um for example recently we've we've had one that i loved um it was uh, if you could only keep a hundred photos, which <gasps> ones would they be and why? Oh, that would I've <laughs> got to listen to that one. Oh my gosh, yes. But one of my favorite. Yeah. How to think about that, you know, if you could only have a hundred and what that would look like, even, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> you're going to have to give me the link to that podcast so yeah. I can put it on this <laughs> and listen to it because I yeah. didn't know until today yeah. that you had a podcast. So yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, 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 really yeah, fantastic. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is a, quite a big question, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, I know, but oh gosh, is that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get off this call and listen to it. <laughs> oh, dear. That is so yeah. good to hear, you know, and then people can go through their, you know, yeah. the five golden rules, whatever they are, yeah. and then, um, yeah, and then if they can't do it themselves, they've got you yeah. to go to. And, yeah. you know, the, the scanning would be amazing because that's the yeah. most boring thing ever. <laughs> If somebody has that job, I would give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it's a, yeah, it's a world, uh, a special world there with the scanning. Yes. <laughs> um, it's, uh, but it, and it's fascinating what you can do. Um, and Fiona's got the equipment. She does camera scanning, which is the latest trend oh, that oh. gives you the very best photo, the, the quality is enormous. And it's, I'm not talking about phone scanning, of course. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Think about it. laughs> no. But uh, camera scanning is the thing and it's amazing. You know, uh, I've just had her um, scan very old photos that were very faded. And, you know, so maybe you've seen those really old ones that have like a silvery coat yes on. yes yeah uh with the camera scanning you know you can make that disappear and you get oh it's just wow. amazing what you can get out of it oh and that's... without even photoshopping or anything you yeah know? <laughs> oh, that's terrific but it's yeah. terrific that you don't have you know like those old photos are so fragile because yeah. i've got 
you yeah. know a few that are really like they're cracking yeah. as well yeah 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 so. and for that if you handle those um get yourself some white cotton gloves mm -hmm. uh, yeah. most pharmacies sell them or some of the camera shops they sell them or you can get them online but make sure don't use like um you know food handling gloves or anything like that latex use oh. the cotton gloves to protect those old photos yeah um and yeah they are definitely sort of you know if you want to scan photos they're high up on the priority list before yeah. they deteriorate more um and there are special products also that you can um archive them in right. so that they don't deteriorate more and that they protect it well and you know uh, i mentioned that before you know in your um roof or in under the house we don't mm -hmm. tend to have basements here but under the house or in the roof or in the garage, that's not where you should store any, any okay. photos, really. <laughs> no, make sure they're in a dry place, yeah. uh, in a darkish place where the temperature is as stable as possible, not humid. Um, and uh, yeah, to keep, and you know, the shoe box is not the ideal storage option because all these mm. cardboard things they have chemicals in them that can damage your photos as well over time so there is the specific archival materials that um we recommend using to store photos especially those old precious ones yeah yeah so there's even more specific archival boxes for the yeah. older photos well no it's so, just uh, it's just archival boxes of of right. um museum quality museum archival quality, oh really. right yes. yeah. yeah wow but yeah. it and these are not boxes that you buy in ikea they look nicer than the archival boxes but yeah, oh, they do okay. a good job. <laughs> all right so it seems that i am going to have to go and buy <laughs> special boxes <laughs> yeah oh dear they don't have to be that expensive actually there are different mm -hmm. supplies and they're not all that expensive oh right yeah, yeah. oh that's that's really good to hear <laughs> <laughs> and also with the scanning and with the old printed photos what the good thing is about going through a collection that is printed is that you usually do that only once yes it's a once-off it's not repetitive it's not like the digital photos that keep coming in yes okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh -huh. it's it's a sort of a project with an end in sight and it is time consuming but it can totally be done um uh -huh. and you know with photo messes as we lovingly call it <laughs> in a good way a mess yeah. um uh it hasn't come overnight it's not going to go away overnight yeah so i think there is no magic wand but <laughs> no i think mine is going to take years to go through so i better live a long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and also look i've seen that happen time and time again and with myself too mm. once you've gone through a family collection like what you have described mm. um I guarantee you will start taking photos in a different way. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Yeah. 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 yeah you've got to think about it though, yeah. too. Like I don't think about those three months that I spent going through yeah. my mum's stuff until I sit in this room and there's boxes <laughs> there, like there's a dozen boxes. And I know there's bags in this cupboard yeah. and there's boxes in the garage as well. Yeah, That's when I think about it, not when I'm yeah. taking photos. So <laughs> yeah, I think maybe I need to think about it when I'm taking the photos as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you've, you've stored them. So once you've actually gone through the project, and done it that's when it will kick in yeah um, and whether it's in with the print photos or with the digital photos if you start sorting those and you know we start by making sure you've got a backup system in place then we gather all the photos we deduplicate we call as much as of the bad ones that we don't want to keep and then we sort mm -hmm. um you know that that's the principle and then they keep coming in so having like 
a monthly maintenance, for example, is always good to have. And once you've worked through a big project like that, you know, it's like, it, it will automatically change how we take photos, but with most people, um, I've got that feedback from pretty much everyone um, and myself included. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I look forward to that, Chantelle, <laughs> <laughs> because I really need to do it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for, <laughs> for chatting with me today. I know, like, it's really helped me. I know it will help other people as well. And um, yeah, it's and really some really good tips as well. Like I'm going to take away the, you know, the writing of the story when I take the photograph as well, or even recording my voice, like for yeah. the next generation and the generations to come. Yes, I think. That yeah, nice yeah. Too. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I'm sure people will appreciate hearing my voice so yes. <laughs> my family will yeah and if I can share just one last little tip we were talking about you know the photo legacy um and what I always uh what I think gets forgotten a lot also you know make sure that somebody has access to your photos if you store them on your computer make sure that uh you know somebody has at your actual password to get in there or if you've got them in a cloud account or something like that you know make sure that somebody knows and can actually access those photos uh, so that they're not lost um that's a, that's another little um, practical tip <laughs> yes yes and a definite basic practical tip as well yeah. so yeah, yeah I'll have to put that on my list because I've got a I've got a book of all my you know all the things my children need yeah if, you know when we die we're going to yeah but yeah. there's a book there that they know yeah. everything they need is in yeah. so I'll add that to that and yeah do that I think yeah. that's really important it's you know it's it's starting to it's part of our assets it's digital it's digital ax, uh, uh, assets digital assets yeah <laughs> I yes that's say. right and um, but that doesn't help if we can't access them and unfortunately I've seen that happen oh, dear. Um, depending on you know for example with uh, someone who's lost um, their daughter and mm. they've got photos in Facebook but they don't have the password so they oh, can't dear. access them there's no way they give you they're not gonna let you have them oh. so the, these sort of things you know they get forgotten but they are important yeah, yeah. so yeah. even yeah even your passwords to Facebook and you know all the social media yeah as well yeah. that's so important yeah. yeah oh wow yeah well thank you so much Chantelle <laughs> thank you it's been lovely speaking to you likewise <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot bye thank you see you soon bye